Hey guys, I would have to say that one of the most straightforward calls that can always go sideways in a hurry is an allergic reaction. Today's video is going to be talking all about anaphylactic shock and demonstrating how exactly we go from antigen to anaphylaxis. So let's get started. When we actually talk about anaphylaxis, we are talking about a severe allergic reaction to some form of allergen, whether that be a bee sting or pollen or pet dander or even food like peanuts. It all depends on what the person might be allergic to and how their tolerance has built up over time. As EMS providers, we need to determine through our assessment whether our patients are just having an allergic reaction or having a severe allergic reaction like anaphylaxis. Typically, when mental status changes start and the hypotension starts is when we're seeing the changes from an allergic reaction to now an anaphylactic reaction. Now guys, before I start drawing out the microcellular biology of all of this, I want to talk about the signs and symptoms of allergic reactions. Remember, we're going to get that hypotension in severe cases. We're going to get that swelling. We're going to get the hives or the urticaria, right? All of those red blotchy marks around the skin. We could see some wheezing in the, in the lungs or strider in the upper airways. All of these are signs and symptoms that you need to be aware of in your assessment. Now guys, I'm gonna draw this out for you so you clearly understand how we go from a simple allergen to a anaphylactic reaction. Okay, so we have these allergens and remember they could be anything. Now when this allergen finally gets into the skin or into the body uh, via some form or fashion, they're first going to start having the body create antibodies right? And these antibodies are Y-liked uh, structured proteins. And these are called immunoglobin uh, E proteins. So immunoglobin E, right? Um, immunoglobulin E, okay? And these are just proteins. And what these are going to do is eventually these proteins are going to come over to another um, immune cell, okay? And these are large cells, and these are called mast cells, okay? And these are kind of the alert system, right? They're going to be swimming around, and they're going to have these antibodies attach themselves to the mast cells, right? And all of this is sensitizing the body to the allergen, right? It's making the body aware of this allergen so that the next time when the allergen comes in, it's going to get attracted directly onto these mast cells and these antibodies, okay? So this is, say, the first uh, the first time that the uh, allergen has come in contact. Now, when the allergen comes into contact a second time, we'll say second time here so we can easily follow. So these allergens come in contact with the body a second time. They are going to immediately get picked up by these antibodies. Now, these mast cells, they're going to call for help. And the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to release a uh, uh, a substance called cytokines, okay? And this is going to call for the white blood cells, okay? To appear in the blood and come to the area where all of these allergens have now just, you know, invaded the body. Okay, so these white blood cells are going to be coming in and they're going to be doing all the damage trying to get rid of these allergens. But the other thing that uh, these mast cells are going to release is a smaller, more harsh uh, substance, and that is called histamine. Okay, and this histamine release 
is the big reason as to why we transition from allergic reaction ah, uh, to anaphylaxis, okay? Is this histamine release? Now, uh, just take my, my drawing here, okay? My drawing here is of a normal um, interstitial space with vasculature running through it, okay? Now, use your imaginations. This dotted line is a normal-sized vasculature wall, so a normal-sized blood vessel. And there's antigens all in the interstitial spaces, okay? There's antigens sitting in there, and the white blood cells are sitting down here and they're going through and they're like, how the heck can we get to these allergens, right? So these mast cells, they release the histamine and the histamine causes vasodilation. That's the big thing that it's going to cause. It's going to cause vasodilation. So these blood vessels are going to go from the dotted lines and increase in size to the solid red lines, okay? That vasculature is going to increase in size. The next thing that it's going to do is it's going to create permeability within the vasculature wall. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to create holes inside the vasculature wall. Okay. This histamine is very potent stuff and it's going to create these, uh, you know, gaping holes in the vasculature wall. And what that's going to allow um, the white blood cells to do is get into the interstitial spaces to then attack all of the uh, allergens that's inside the interstitial spaces. The problem with this is it's also going to allow the leakage of fluid. So here you're going to get two very potent symptoms of anaphylaxis. The first, remember, is the vasodilation, okay? That increase in the, uh, the size of the blood vessels, okay? The second thing that you're going to get is swelling or edema, okay? And this is because of the permutation of that inter, uh, intervascular fluid. Now, because of this, okay, because of the vasodilation, your signs and symptoms are going to include a decrease in blood pressure. Because if you, if you have the blood vessels getting bigger, you're going to have a lot of vasculature leaking. So there's less blood coming back to the heart, less cardiac output. Blood is going to be pooling in places. Um, so less, again, less blood coming back to the heart, cardiac output decreases in turn, blood pressure decreases. Okay. In turn, heart rate is going to increase, right? Swelling and edema are going to be present, and these are going to be the big signs, especially that blood pressure drop for anaphylaxis. So guys, how are we treating anaphylaxis? The first and foremost thing, if you believe your patient is in true anaphylactic shock, you need to be administering them epi, uh, epinephrine IM. So uh, whether it be a paramedic using an IM injection into the bicep or another large muscle group or an EMT or CFR using an EpiPen that's prescribed to the patient or given to you via your agency, this is the first line that you need to be doing if it's anaphylaxis. Your typical dosage for anaphylaxis is 0.3 milligrams IM epi for an adult and 0.15 milligrams I am for a pediatric. Why we're giving epinephrine is important. We're giving epinephrine because it's an adrenergic agonist. So it's going to act on beta one, beta two and alpha one 
uh, receptors within the body. It's important here because it's going to really affect that alpha one channel. That alpha one is your vasculature. So here we have very big vasodilated pipes all around the body, right? These vasodilated pipes are not returning blood flow to the heart, decreasing blood pressure. When we give epinephrine, it's going to clamp down on those vasodilated pipes. When it does this, it's going to limit the amount of fluid leaking into the interstitial spaces, as well as allowing more blood to come back to the heart, increasing cardiac output. The next thing that you're going to want to do if you're a paramedic, you're going to want to give an antihistamine like diptahydramine or Benadryl. It's going to take the, the histamine release from the mast cells and it's going to slow it down and block it, taking all of the damage that the histamine is doing to the vasculature out of play. So the vasodilation isn't going to happen anymore. The permeability isn't going to happen anymore. And with the epinephrine, you should start to see some signs of blood pressure increase and swelling decrease. If you start to hear some wheezing within the lungs during this anaphylactic reaction, you're going to also be giving albuterol to help open up those lung passageways and bronchodilate those constricted airways. The epinephrine will also help with this as it's a beta-2 agonist as well. Guys, I hope this helps understand the concepts around anaphylaxis and how we go from just a simple allergen to an anaphylactic shock type reaction. Guys, if you're still stumped on other types of shock, check out this playlist right here. It's full of great information regarding all of the different types of shock, including cardiogenic, neurogenic, and septic. Stay safe out there and I will see you guys in the next video.